Welcome to another video. In this video we will continue learning maternity starting with percutaneous umbilical blood sampling. This test is also referred to as cordocentesis. This has direct access to fetal circulation. The main reason of percutaneous umbilical blood sampling is for fetal blood sampling and transfusion. It is mainly performed in high-risk centers, though many centers have replaced this with a placental biopsy instead. Chorionic villi sampling The purpose of this test is to obtain sample of chorionic villi, which is from the placental tissue. The goal is to assess for fetal genetic abnormalities. This is performed transcervical or transabdominal and performed during the first trimester. For nursing interventions just know that it is similar as an amniocentesis. The next test to know is maternal serum alpha feta protein screening. This is to screen for neural tube defects. It is ideally performed at 16 to 18 weeks of pregnancy. Lower than normal levels would mean a follow-up for Down syndrome. Higher than normal levels would mean a follow-up for neural tube defect. Fetal assessment. Fetal heart rate normal range is 110 to 160 per minute. This is a must know. The fundal height is used to evaluate gestational age and growth of fetus. In order to assess fetal activity, we assess kick counts or daily fetal movement counts. We must educate the patient to contact the provider if fetal movement decreases or ceases entirely for 12 hours, and to contact if less than 10 kicks every 2 hours. This is very important. Also teach the mother to try to assess kick counts at the same time each day. The most useful tip to help the patient is to teach them that the fetus is most active after meals and in the evening. Note that fetal movement may be decreased by drugs, including alcohol and cigarette smoking. Also, obesity may hinder the sensation of fetal activity. Well, that's it for this video. In the next video we will continue the lesson by learning about obstetrical terminology such as GT-PAL. See you there!